welcome and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Jane Irrigation uh, Irrigation Training Series. I'm Richard Rastusha, Vice President of Water Management Solutions. And um, boy, we are here to talk about precise chemical and fertilizer application, which has been a subject that we've talked about a couple times over the last few months. And uh, it's one of these things that as we talk about it, as we talk more about it, uh, more and more people want to learn more. They want to get a little bit more detail and uh, they want to learn about the different ways to apply uh, fertilizer. So, um, you know, uh, Maisie is one of uh, my favorite uh, companies that I do business with. And uh, they actually have a, a great uh, Venturi uh, based uh, fertilizer uh, injector that you're going to learn all about. And I hope I just didn't misrepresent it, John. But uh, uh, really excited uh, to have John Petroso with us today. Uh, thing, a couple of things I really appreciate about John is, uh, of course, he's a Fresno State grad. And uh, uh, more importantly, you know, John stayed right there in the uh, Central Valley, right in that Fresno area. And uh, he's done uh, quite a bit of growing on his own. So it's nice to uh, have a guest today who has been out there doing what uh, I know many of you are uh, doing every day. So John's got some real world uh, advice uh, to, to help us along uh, to understand fertilizer application uh, and using uh, fertigation. And uh, you know he's also been involved in the ag tech world for uh, quite a while now. So we have a lot to learn from John. John, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thank, thank you ha for having me, Richard. And uh, you know I'm I'm really uh, glad I could you know talk talk about Maisie injectors and fertilization uh, today. Uh, actually, my first exposure with Maisie was as a grower, and uh, actually some of the some of the injectors I used over 20 years ago are still out there doing their thing. I bet, I bet. So, and, and you got it going as a grower. I know uh, you got me going uh, in my garden at home. I use it in all my roses and uh, man, what a difference it makes. Uh, but um, so John, I know you uh, uh, have been out and about, right? The season's uh, in full swing now, right? It got warm, people are out there. What, what are you hearing about uh, uh, the start of the season so far? Everybody, everybody's really, really busy. Everybody's very optimistic uh, about this, this season. Um, you know, we, we've kind of figured out how to do things, but uh, everybody's opening up their office. You know, it was kind of hard to go see somebody uh before and now it's just like sure come on by you know and and that uh um it it's just you know things are returning to some semblance of normal so john i was looking at the u.s drought monitor yesterday and uh man it is getting bad in colorado utah arizona new mexico's having the uh, uh, worst uh uh, season they've had since they've been recording rainfall for rainfall. Uh, how it, what, what's the talk right now in the Central Valley? It's um, the supplies are tight. Um, uh, a lot of you know uh, they said Milton uh, Lake, which uh, provides the uh, uh, the front through the Fry and Kern canals, one of uh, the major contractors. Uh, they're um, they're uh, at. 50% of what they normally are level right now. Uh, so um, it's it's going to be a tight year. Uh, you know, people are going to really have to keep an eye on their uh, distribution, you know, humidity and their maintenance of their systems to make sure they're using every drop the way they should. Yeah, that's right. And uh, uh, I don't have to remind you or anybody else, James got a lot of products to help him uh, along with all that uh, <laughs> monitoring of the water that they're using. So uh, anyway, I'm excited to learn uh, more today about fertigation, uh, kind of learn about some of the things maybe I'm doing wrong or better ways to do what I've already been doing. Um, so uh, anyway, I do have the chat open uh, this afternoon as well as the Q&A. So if anybody watching wants to ask a question or uh, make a comment, put it in there and uh, I'll ask uh, John when it's appropriate. So, all right, take it away, John. Okay, well, let me just give you a quick little little history. Um, Angela Maisie, our founder, who's still uh, very active within the company, uh, saw the need uh, in, the, in the early 70s, the, uh, the aqueduct, uh, 
had come through, California Aqueduct had come through into uh, Bakersfield area and uh, there was a lot of development of uh, properties, a lot of uh, pressurized irrigation systems going in, a lot of uh, drip was really starting to take off. And there really wasn't a good way to inject the liquid fertilizer and ke our chemicals into a pressurized irrigation. And especially if you didn't want to have access or uh, didn't want to uh, power it with electricity. So Angelo, also being a Fresno State graduate, uh, looked back on, on some of the education he got there and, and uh, uh, Giano, uh, Gianni Venturi um, developed the, the concept of the Venturi. Uh, and Angelo took that and uh, he uh, saw that he could, he could draw, using a Venturi, he could draw liquid fertilizer into an irrigation system and uh, develop, uh, develop the uh, Venturi uh, and optimized it uh, on a lathe, lathe in his garage, got his first patent, uh, first of many patents he's, he's gotten and Maisie Injector Company was born. So <laughs> that's interesting, John. Now, one thing, uh, and just tell me you're gonna get to it uh, or we can talk about it now, but this Venturi, there's actually a uh, pressure differential on each right. side, the inlet and the uh, outlet side. And is that what causes the- Exactly, uh, actually the next slide, I'm gonna actually show you uh, an animation. So here, here's a Venturi here. And if you notice the pressure gauges, we've got a higher pressure on one side, a lower pressure downstream. And we've cut it away so you can see the uh, water flow in there. The water flow's coming into that Venturi. And as it comes into the Venturi, it restricts down. And in that restriction, that in, the water increases in flow and that creates a vacuum at the suction port. And that's what starts to draw the material into the injector and it's mixed fully in the, in the water stream. And you need about a 25% pressure differential to uh, create that, that vacuum. And, and we're showing that with that little triangle there in, in those brackets on the Venturi. And to increase the, is, as that pressure differential increases, the suction rate increases and it maximizes at about 50%. Uh, of a pressure differential. And that's that's key to the Venturi and the dynamic mixing action, uh, you know, that mixes the chemicals. Um, and how do we create that uh, pressure differential? We can do it by putting a pressure reducer in, a, in, a, in, a, in the main line and restricting some of that flow and creating more pressure on the inlet. We can also do it by putting a a uh, pressure uh, regulator or pressure uh, sustaining valve in, in the main line and creating that that pressure pressure differential that way also. Um, our, if, if we wanted to maintain the pressure in the main line, we can use a, uh, a booster pump. And some people ask, well, you're using a pump. It's still less expensive than a, uh, than a positive displacement pump. And it's, less wear and tear because you're running clean water through that pump. And when you install the Venturis, it's all right to install them vertical as long as you have the flow going up through the injector, keeping it full of water. If you uh, install them with it going down, you run the chance of scavenging that injector and, and breaking the suction because you have to have that thing full of, full of water. Yeah. And I'll show okay, so you. I, I a have a bunch of questions about, already, John. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll talk so, to you a little later about sizing an injector. <laughs> so if you've got, uh, I, I've seen this, right? I've seen where the injector is actually uh, uh, laying on grade, right? With some drip tubing going to it, it's laying on top of the ground. And uh, you have a bucket that uh, it's drawing, uh, then the bucket's actually higher than the injector, but this seems to work okay too. Is it, it, would you expect that? Yes, and it, it will affect um, when, when the material is 
below when the injectors below the in, the material being injected it, it'll actually get a little bit of positive pressure on it or vice versa if the injectors higher than that and uh, uh, we can you can calculate that out we have those uh, calculations on our web page but also our injector selector tool our online tool will actually do those uh, calculations for you and and tell you exactly what your uh, suction rate should be and the weight of the material will affect it too now will there be more uh, fertilizer uh, taken up when you first turn on a system than after the system's been fully charged and running for a while no once you have your your pressure differential once once that is set and and is constant it will consistently pull the same amount of material throughout the irrigation process. And from time to time, it, 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 there's no moving parts to venturi, so there's, there's nothing to wear, nothing to pull it out of calibration. Yeah, and then how is this different or is it different than just you know the fertilizer sprayers we see on the end of a hose? Okay, um, there, uh, some of like the, uh, you mean like the, uh, uh, miracle grow and that type of thing. That's yeah. a form of, of inventory also. Uh, it's just configured a little differently with the tank right there and that, but it is, it is a inventory. Right. And, but I think some of the tr trouble with that or the challenge, right, is uh, you don't get such a uh, uniform application of fertilizer, right? It can all go right at the beginning. Right. <laughs> Wherever you're pointed it, first is going to look better than at the end. <laughs> right. Because because you're diluting your your material in that that colder and tank and and you're not pulling in a consistent liquid, you know, yeah. throughout the process. So that's that's kind of what goes on there. But one thing I really wanted to to emphasize with the venturi is is that pressure differential i've, I've got uh images of, of the actually the same venturi it's the same injector but uh the one on the left uh we've got an inlet pressure of 25 psi and a downstream outlet pressure of 5 psi and we've we've kind of highlighted the the vacuum space of, of the uh injector in and red there and it's it's fairly lar large and the suction rate is about 96.7 uh, gallons per hour the same injector is on the uh, right side but the uh with with still 25 psi going into the injector but the downstream pressure is at 20 psi so you, your vacuum space is considerably less and your fluid suction rates about a, you know, uh, is only 30 gallons per hour. I mean, you, you've, you've reduced your suction rate by two thirds. And, and that's key. If you wanna um, increase your suction rate on a Venturi, you need to increase the difference between the inlet and outlet pressure that's key a lot of people have the misconception if if i can increase my flow i will increase my suction rate and that's that's not the case with venturi so, so john how do you increase or decrease the uh, outlet pressure you can do that um how you're situated with the uh, that uh, like we showed in the, in the uh, short animation there, you can do that with a, uh, a pressure reducing valve, restricting more of the flow. Essentially, it's just like putting your, your thumb over a, a hose, you're creating more back pressure, or uh, you can do it by putting a booster pump on the inlet of the injector and creating more pressure that way. And sometimes, um, your your system itself if uh you open more more valves so you have more outflow of the system your pressure downstream would drop then you could do it that way but generally you do it by uh, adjusting the uh restrictor valve in the main line yeah and so why do i care if i'm applying it uh, 96.7 gallons per hour or 31.9 gallons per hour well you you want to be able to put in the material and uh, give it, uh, you don't want to slug it in and, and uh, 
all at once. And then as you're irrigating, pushing that below the root zone and, and down into the water table and, and causing us issues and that type of thing, you wanna, you wanna keep that material where you need it. And that's, that's one of the advantages and I'll talk about it in, in a few minutes, but uh, you know, that's, that's the advantage of fertigation is we're putting the material at, at the spot where the plant can use it, you know, uh, and through the irrigation, it's, it's, it's one of the best value added things you can add to an irrigation system. Yeah, and, uh, and, and not very expensive either, which is really great when you think about the payback. Now, uh, I, I hear this term a lot and somebody's asking you a question about it. Is this what we refer to when we say micro dosing or, you know, what, what is that about? Uh, and, and I'll get to, to that at the very end. Uh, we can, it's spoon feeding, microdosing on that. And uh, that is um, the way the industry is, is going. Um, you know, there was a time and, and we still have people that, you know, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my, you know, big slug of fertilizer in now because I have the time to do it and we're gonna do it in the spring and we're good for the year. But we find we, lo we uh, waste a lot of fertilizer that way. And by giving spoon feeding, by giving the, the plant, plant uh, small doses of fertilizer as it needs it is, is the better way to go. And it's just like us. We don't eat one meal a week, you know. Right. And <laughs> I uh, yeah, eat for some reason, that, when, I, but, uh, yeah. when I overeat, I'm as sluggish. I'm probably worse performing than if I'm hungry. <laughs> right. So, you know, with... You know, the, the common types of in, injection systems are, are venturi-based systems. Uh, one of the advantages of that is because of the way a venturi operates, the, the dynamic mixing and, and, flow, uh, and uh, circulation of the water in the venturi fully mixes the product, are your, your positive replacement pumps that uh, a lot of times use a piston or a diaphragm action that, that puts out pulses into the main line of the in injection system. And I'll kind of go a little more on a comparison of those. So if a venturi's whoop, out there, um, because of the dynamic mixing that, uh, action and uh, Maisie has internal mixing veins in their uh, venturi's, uh, your, your uh, product is fully mixed into the irrigation stream. Where with a pump, uh, a lot of times they're, you're uh, injecting pulses of fertilizer in, into the irrigation system and you need an external uh, mixing chamber or a uh, static mixer in, in the line to make sure that product is, is fully mixed. So you get a uniform product going out to the irrigation system and uh, all the plants are getting the same amount of fertilizer. Uh, one of the advantages of a uh, venturi is there's no moving parts. So there's very little maintenance to be involved. Where with a pump, you've got a lot of working parts and uh, they require maintenance and, and can wear over time and, and that type of thing. Um, if you need a booster pump with a venturi, uh, you're running clean, you're putting that uh, before the chemicals. So uh, clean water is running through that pump. So you don't have the, the cause of wear and tear on the pump. Where with, with uh, your displacement pumps, they're fully immersed in, into the chemical. And uh, you, know, you do have wear issues happening with, with some of the materials you're using. Um, and as far as control with a Venturi, um, you're, you're fortunate because you can take a metering valve and infinitely control your rates. Um, you can decide uh, where you wanna be and dial in exactly where you wanna be. With a pump, you're kind of limited to the selections the manufacturer's settings on the, on the pump. So if you kind of want half of that rate, it's kind of difficult to do. Um, and then uh, we talked about before, once you've set up that pressure differential and if and you maintain your uh, pressures constant, um, it'll maintain accuracy uh, day in and day out. Uh, 
and it won't it won't work itself out at calibration. Where pump as a pump wears, it'll it'll uh, start losing calibration, and you have to go back and and recalibrate it. And then the economics of of uh, Venturi. Um, a lot of times a rebuild kit on on a positive placement pump is more than the total cost of a Venturi. And uh, they do last a long time. <laughs> I can attest to that. Um, and uh, because there's there's not really much for them to wear out. Yeah. So hey, we've got a, a great question here. Um, and it's, uh, it's a question about pumped irrigation supply and possibly a BFD pumped irrigation system and varying flows that may occur as different valves open and close. So uh, with the with the variable frequency drive pump, you'll get varying flows as different valves open and close. How, do, how does this affect the uh, Venturi system? Um, as long as you maintain your pressures or, or take that no allowance, um, you're fine. I mean, because, you know, we're talking two different things. You have pressure and you have flow. And uh, sometimes people get those two confused, but, uh, you know, you know, flow is the volume of water going through that injector. But as long as that VFD ramps up and maintains the system at a set pressure uh, at different flows, you're okay. So, okay. But you right, can, I mean, if need be, you, you, you'd you have to make adjustments, but that, that can be done. I mean, uh, the other question we have uh, has to do around uh, like uh, people that are using compost teas, right? They have their secret sauce and uh, how much filtering are they going to have to do? Where does that filtering take place? Is it going to present a problem? Okay, the filtering takes place, you know, as they make it. Uh, the suction lines uh, that we have have, uh, um, have a uh, 500 mesh screen, screen on them. Uh, and uh, we can handle some suspended solids, but uh, generally uh, you, you're going to want to make sure that your product's pretty consistent and uh, is well screened regardless because you're going through your uh, irrigation system. You don't want to foul your, your emitters. So if it's good enough to go through the, the emitters, you won't have a problem with, with the uh, injectors and actually the um the venturiers are very good uh because they're they're not creating high pressures like you are in a, a piston pump and that so your biologics uh work really your microbes uh do very well with a venturi because you're not injuring them you're not sharing them or are putting them under heat and pressure and so you don't kill as many microbes uh when you're using venturi yeah, good to know. So whatever filtering you're already using for your drip system, it's going to work just fine with a Venturi. Right. You know, you just want a consistent, clean product, you know. Um, and then, uh, you know, your fish emulsions and stuff, uh, you just, uh, uh, the protein buildup, uh, you you handled it the same way you would in a pump. You run a little, don, you know, dish detergent through there and it cleans it right up. Yeah. Yeah. It works very well with organics. And, and the other thing about the Venturi is they're safe because you're bringing in the material under a vacuum instead of a high pressure concentrated flow. So um, if a line were to break or anything like that, um, it's not going to be spraying around and, and uh, creating a health hazard uh, to the individuals working with it. But uh, I wanted to. Mention flow meters. Um, you can put a flow meter on a Venturi and that will give you real time, uh, will give you the idea of how much flow you're injecting. And uh, you can get that in real time and, and see what's going on. And then you can meter, uh, putting a metering valve on, on the uh, Venturi, uh, you're able to, on the suction port, you're able to meter in that flow and dial in by looking at that flow meter exactly where you want to be and that's a, a v-notch type uh, flow meter so it's it's real fine control and uh, that's how we control it so um, that's kind of a misconception with our venturi some people 
go and look at our performance tables and, and they see the suction rate for the injector. And it's like, well, I don't need that much. I just need slightly off of it. That's where the, uh, the metering valve comes into play. So you can dial in exactly where you want to be. Yeah. Hey, John, we've got another question about filtration. Uh, I've opened up a big can of worms here. I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's so fascinating. And you're doing a great job with the answers. So uh, one person's asking, you know, do I want to uh, put my uh, filter upstream or downstream of the Venturi? OK, that's a really great question. Um, and <laughs> it's, it's a, a question. Uh, IRTC at uh, Cal Poly talks about it and, and everybody. Um, a lot of the kind of the rule of thought on injection uh, in general, venturis or anything is um, they like, they would like you to inject pre filter because if by chance there's any particulates or anything that reaction in the water, and I'll talk a little bit about that in the next slide, but uh, anything that, that happens will be caught by the filters. But if you're doing chemigation and injecting acids or that type of material, they suggest that you inject that after, after the filtration because of the acids work uh, reacting to the components in the filters and, and valving and, and that type of thing. So, a rule of thumb, I, I uh, myself, of I recommend uh, doing it pre pre filtered, just as an extra safety issue. If if there is some type of reaction in particular, the filters will take care of it. Yeah. Awesome, interesting, right? So oftentimes, right, the uh, the answer always starts with it depends, but right. <laughs> more often than not, you're going to have it before the filter. Yeah, but but you know, for safety sakes, I would do it that way because. Uh, you know, we have less of a chance, but you got to take into account to your, your uh, filter, your uh, flush water. So um, it might just be a matter of putting in a solenoid to isolate the venturi when you do a flush, yeah. you know, so that's not pumping liquid. So and we what, talked about the venturis um, and that. Um, so what's a good way to, uh, size of venturi and and one of one of the things we have at Maisie to help we have our our performance tables online and and you can do it that way by looking up a chart and all that but we also have our injector selector tool and that's you just go on our website uh, click the injector selector uh, button on the on the first entry page uh, register once for the for the program and then you're you're in and what the what the system does is it will will ask you questions of what method do you want to do? Do you want to do pressure restriction, or do you want to do a booster pump or that? You click that, and then it'll ask you simple questions of what's your what's your system's flow, how much do you want to inject, and those type of things. And then it'll give you a selection which uh, we're showing here of okay, these are the injectors that'll work for you. And uh, we encourage our growers and and uh, irrigation dealers to use this because it's a, it's a great tool because you have uh, not only give you a selection of the injectors, but it also has a comment box there and you can use that for, for uh, putting pricing information or whatever you wanted to do in there. And you can save this, you can email it. But if you had questions about your selection or questions about the Venturis, you can put those uh, questions in that comment box go over on the on the screen there and hit that uh, send to Maisie and I'll go to me and I'll go also go to our tech support people and we'll be able to answer your questions and, and uh, you know tell you tell you the information you need. The other nice thing about this uh, program is if you're using a booster pump, it will give you the selection of the injectors you need. And it'll also tell you how much boost pressure you would need to accomplish uh, the injection. Mm. And it would give you a sele uh, the selection of what water horsepower pump you would use with that Venturi. So it kind of helps you in the whole selection process. Real easy to use and uh, just a real handy tool. You can access it 
once you've registered, you can access it on your phone or your pad. So you could actually do it out in the field. I can't imagine it being much easier than that. Now, John, when I uh, when I ask you the question, uh, if it's business hours, am I going to get a response the same day in 24 hours in a week? What what should my expectation be? Within within the day, um, usually if uh, it pop, you know if it pops up on our computers, we jump on it, um, yeah. and because uh, uh, you know someone's trying to do something and and we're the impediment to that. So we try to get on that as quickly as possible. And I, I even check it over the weekend, not religion, you know, with at least once a day. Yeah. Know. That's great to hear. That's, um, <laughs> that's a lot of uh, due diligence there. Thank you. So and we, we had another question about the flow meter valve, the one you had on a couple slides mm -hmm. ago. And uh, they were just uh, wondering how you actually set that. How do you uh, slow the flow with that? Okay, well, it's it's a valve in this this suction line, and, and they're they're two different animals. I had this conversation earlier, um, and uh, you got to think of the the flow meter is like your speedometer. That's just showing you, hey, this is how much is going in. The metering valve, you got to think of it as gas pedal. And I, you know, as I open or close that, I'm gonna restrict the flow going into the into the Venturi and that's gonna, you know, give me a rate eight. So I just look at that flow meter and I, if, if I wanna do 10 gallons an hour, I just, you know, turn the knob until the level of that, that hits the 10 gallon line and I'm good. Yeah. Okay, and then one thing um, I wanted to, to touch base on, uh, we you've heard me use and, and people use the you know term fertigation and you also hear chemigation and that and they're kind of used interchangeably but uh, fertigation is is the application of plant nutrition products uh through through the irrigation system where where chemigation is the application of either pesticides or um other products to adjust uh water ph or uh, some of your cleaning products that you use to, to clean the irrigation system. And um, at this time too, I'd like to mention that uh, with fertigation, um, most of uh, your fertigation products, you can use a polypropylene injector. As long as your uh, pH is uh, a, you know, neutral or, or slightly alkaline, you're good at at a pH of seven um, or six, you can use a polypropylene injector. If, you're, if your fertilizers are a little more acidic, you'd want to use a PVDF injector. And we that's what you'd use for acids or uh, your corrosive uh, line cleaning products or uh, like soluble gypsum that is real abrasive. And PVDF is, you might have heard the, the the term Hynar or Kynar. Those are trade names for for PVDF. PVDF is polyvinylidefluorine is the chemical uh, name of it. We just uh, generally it's just called PVDF. But those are the two materials that uh, we use on the ag side uh, at Maisie for uh, injectors. And that's, uh, uh, yeah, that's a good clear way to distinguish the two. Uh, I appreciate that. I hadn't heard that before. Yeah. And, and it's really easy to, to tell the difference between the two injectors. Uh, a polypropylene injector is going to kind of have a, a duller matte like finish and it's, it's a little lighter. Uh, if you threw it in a bucket of water, it would float. Uh, a polypropylene uh, PVDF injector has got a dull sheen to it. It's a little shinier. And it, it does have a, a, a little weight to it. And if you threw that in a bucket of water, it'd sink to the bottom of the bucket. So that's, that's kind of the quick and easy, easy way of determining it. And then uh, for fertigation in general, um, first, first off, we wanna have a irrigation system that's uh, got good distribution uniformity and, and is working well because uh, you know, that's the name of the game. If we don't have uh, consistent irrigation, we're not gonna get consistent revolts and fertigation. Um, 
and we want to combine the the, the nutrients in uh, in a well mixed uh, stream, you know, proportionally, and and uh, and generally, you want to uh, have the inject uh, the uh, irrigation system fill. Um, you want to you it's the you know uh, quarter roll. You do uh, you you run the system for for about a quarter of, of the set, then you inject for uh, the next half, and then you want to have enough uh, free flowing water going through the injection system with no fertilizer to flush out the system towards the end. So you don't have any residual fer fertilizer in your drip lines and that, you know, you don't want to create more biofilm issues and that type of thing also, you know, you just want to make sure everything's out of the line. And uh, for you know, and foremost, um, you want to perform a jar test. And jar test is just simply putting some of your irrigation waters in a jar and adding uh, a uh, small amount of the fertilizers you intend to use, shake it up, and let it sit for 24 hours to make sure that there's no precipitants or clouding or that, um, to make sure you're not having any issues with compatibility. And uh, we always recommend that doing it every time you, you fertigate, because even if you're using the same product, but maybe by a different manufacturer, there might be uh, differences in the impur impurities of the product or the materials, inert materials they use to, to flow it through the plant, and it can react. So uh, you could have issues and precipitate and clog your emitters and that type of thing. So it's always good to do a jar test just to make sure that the material you're using is compatible and uh, you won't have any issues. Hey, hey John, I, I totally get it. Makes perfect sense. Do you think half, three quarters, 99% of the people are doing that jar test? I would say less than half. And then I get the call, I get a conversation with somebody later on going, well, the guy told me it would be compatible. Yeah. And you know, everybody, everybody's, everybody's water chemistry is a little different. You, you know, you don't know. Um, and then uh, as far as, uh, you know, you want to have, uh, you know, your plant tissue uh, tested to find out what you need and your irrigation water tested to see uh, what's in there. You may have uh, a source of nit nitrogen in your water and uh, you're uh, going back to getting your, your uh, recommendation from your PCA to uh, make sure that you get the right recommendation for the right rate and the right material to uh, apply to the plants. And then lastly, just to avoid over irrigation so you don't push those products that you spent good money for below the root zone where uh, they can cause environmental problems and uh, aren't any use to the plant. Yeah, amen to that, simple concept, but uh, hard to execute. And then it's always a good idea to flush the injection system after each use and and with the venturi i mean that's as simple as you know when after you finish the injection just uh pulling that suction line out and throwing it in a bucket of water and let it run for a minute or two and it, and it blows it right out and uh, you're done with it and uh, that just makes life simpler and then uh you know, we all should subscribe to the four R's of uh, nutrient stewardship. And most people have, have heard this that have been around uh, uh, fertilizer and that is you want to have uh, the right source. You want to have the, the, uh, the fertilizer that is appropriate for the plant at its stage and, and in the right form so the plant can use it. Um, you want to apply that at, at the right rate uh, recommended by your uh, CCA or PCA uh, based on, the, on the, the demand of the plant. You want to do it at the right time um, so that the, the crop can take it up. Um, and uh, 
you know, it works well in, in your in your growing system, not just putting in putting it in the fall because it's convenient, but putting it where the where the when the plant needs it for uptake and, and has mineral, you know, has mineralized it so that it can be used by the plant. And then lastly is uh, the right place, which uh, fertigation really lends itself to putting that material in right where the plant needs it versus uh, uh, broadcasting of uh, dry materials that uh, get mixed in the soil and you hope you get enough water to uh, help the microbes to break that down and move it to the plant root so the plant can, can get it. Here you're putting it in the irrigation water and giving it right to the plant in a form it can use and take it up and uh, benefit you. And then uh, kind of moving towards uh, today, um, you know, fertilizers becoming more and more expensive. Uh, uh, news is coming out right now that uh, fertilizers are, are becoming extremely expensive uh, uh, this year. Uh, we're going through a water source, uh, you know, crisis right now. Um, your, uh, your nutrients are... Uh, uh, we've got to keep an eye on that for, uh, you know, surface water and, and groundwater contamination, and uh, those excess nutrients getting into the the lakes and rivers and into the ocean have created uh, algae blooms and and to and uh, toxic uh, dead zones within the oceans. So um, we have to we really have to monitor and be careful the way we apply uh, materials. And uh, one of the best ways to do that is with automation. And this is, a, this is an example of a real easy automation. Uh, uh, Jane uh, put, this, put this unit together with one of our Venturi's and their Jane Logic using a, uh, a pressure sustaining valve to create that uh, pressure differential and uh, the Jane Logic controller uh, would engage that when they wanted to do a fertigation event and the venturi's right there uh, kind of in the center. And uh, it would create that pressure differential, open up those solenoid valves and uh, you could draw the product in, do your uh, fertigation event, um, shuts those solenoid, uh, solenoid valves and returns the uh, pressure to uh, the valve to full flow and, and uh, you go about your business. And you can go uh, further from that. Uh, the industry is moving towards uh, proportional uh, fruit, uh, feed fertigation, spoon feeding the crop, giving it small amounts of fertilizer throughout the growing process as it needs it and being able to uh, adjust it. And Dr. Burke at uh, IRTC at Cal Poly, uh, you know, stated that uh, Automation can reduce uh, the cost of labor while improving uh, fertigation accuracy and efficiency. Uh, we can become more um, diligent with, with the uh, products we use and, and uh, give the plants what they need it when they need it and uh, uh, grow a better crop with less fertilizer. So what do we look for in a, in a proportional feed system? We want uh, we want equipment that's uh, of good quality and reliability. We want something that's accurate. Uh, we want something that's simple and easy to use. Um, we wanna be able to have uh, safety alarms and alerts. So if there's a failure in the system, we're alerted and it uh, will shut itself down and that type of thing. We wanna be able to uh, have connectivity so we don't have to actually drive out there and look at the machine. We can check it on our phone or our, our, our desktop. And we want to be able to have the historic use reports for uh, tracking and reporting. And we want a system that uh, reduces uh, fertilizer use. And Venturi's um, work extremely well in proportional feed uh, fertigation uh, systems uh, because of the dynamic mixing action of the Venturi. And because of the ability of having uh, very finite controls over the suction rates, 
And these are these are pictures of uh, Venturi systems and actually we supply the Venturis and we've done some design and uh, uh, technical support with the companies that are that that make them and uh, um, you'll we can you can find Venturi based systems all over the world but primarily uh, your your proportional feed systems are Venturi based there are a few pump based systems but most of them uh, are uh, Venturi based and uh, with Maisie, um, we've uh, taken our 40 years of historical data and combined that with uh, our uh, computation of fluid dynamic modeling to continuously improve uh, the injectors uh, by adding uh, mixing veins to help help with mixing and, and uh, make our injectors more efficient. And uh, that's uh, what we continue to do. And, uh, yes. So, John, I'm sold. I uh, I like uh, your product. Um, if I want to buy it, do I go to you? Do I go to Maisie? Do I go to uh, well, Agri Valley? Where do I go to buy one? Well, Agri Valley um, is is a stop. Um, anybody and uh, as you know, Richard, uh, you're one of our master distributors, and uh, so uh, when somebody calls the Maisie office wanting inventory, the first thing we ask them is, do you have an irrigation dealer that carries Jane products? And uh, we, we usually will refer them to, to your irrigation dealer or uh, you know, um, they can contact Jane and Jane uh, will put them in contact or take care of them. But uh, uh, we, we deal with the distributors, um, not with the, uh, individual okay great well that's that that's helpful and uh and and you know pretty normal so uh that's good news yeah and uh, uh we we communicate quite <laughs> quite often and and uh, jane's really you guys are really really good to deal with and that kind of completes uh what I wanted to say about Maisie and, and uh, the Venturi injectors, and I appreciate the time. And if, if you have any questions or comments, please email me or uh, reach out and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Or... Yeah, well, John, this was fabulous today. I really learned a lot. I really appreciate uh, all your knowledge and uh, your experience and uh, sharing uh, with, uh, with me and with uh, all the viewers today. And uh, you know, just to remind everybody, all of our trainings are on the Jane's website at uh, janesusa forward slash trainings. We also convert all these to podcasts and the podcasts have been super popular lately. So you can listen to these, uh, the Jane Irrigation Training Series on Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio and Google Podcasts now. Uh, so please uh, enjoy those, they're uh, free as always. Uh, thanks to uh, people like John coming on and, and helping us out. We really appreciate that. So again, thanks everybody. We appreciate your time. We hope we're hitting the mark and uh, thank you to those of you who have sent me emails and told me what you wanna see in the future. We're always interested in what you wanna learn about. We wanna supply that for you. So uh, thanks for that. And uh, everybody have a great weekend uh, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you.